Alright, we've got the guard. Are you watering the plants? Are you turning? So, for some reason, their security guard just turned on a hose. I see that the hose actually goes up to the stage. I think he's having it available so he can shoot water at people, right? So the, <laughs> yeah. there's water pressure going up oh to the hose God, and the nozzle's up there. Right. I think it looks like his plan is to shoot water at people. So, I got one. <laughs> Everyone's like, get out of my way. I didn't give one for anybody. I, I got one for all of us. They posted on social media. Well, as soon as they handed out the press release, I kind of snuck behind their little car here and turned off their hose, which I guess they're assuming they're going to try to spray people with, so they're going to look pretty stupid. All right, there's a guy with a bon banjo here, too. I'm Cord Cup. Jacob will block me on Twitter. <laughs> Why, Jacob? <laughs> Why? Well, we'd like to welcome everyone today. Thank you so much for coming to Project 1599 for this very important and very special event in the election cycle 2020. Remember, this is the center of election 2020, and more importantly, the center for truth in election 2020. I present to you now, I ask that all of us join us in the singing of our national anthem. We give Miss Kylie, Kylie Andrews joins us today, and here is Kylie. Oh, say can you see early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh, the Well, that was great. And uh, before we continue, Jack is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We think it's important to be patriotic here. After all, this is the center of election 2020. Jack, why don't you lead us in the pledge? America first, our nation first. Please join with me. Please join with me now as, we, as I lead us all in saying the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, before we get started, you, hey, you're gonna have to stop with the banjo or you're gonna be, you're gonna be kicked out. Yeah, no, listen. No, you're gonna have to stop, you're gonna have to stop with the banjo. And before we continue, we believe in making things right. We believe in giving Kamala Harris a second chance. And for that reason, Pastor Reverend Daryl Thomas will lead us in a prayer for Kamala Harris. 
A prayer for Kamala Harris. Right into the mic. My name is Reverend Daryl Thompson. Today I would like to bless this event and make a few remarks about this content. First of all, I wish for everyone to have a safe and pleasant time. As it relates to Ms. Harris, I would like to, I would like to issue the following prayer. Sodom and Gomorrah are the surrounding towns that gave themselves up to sexual immortality and perversion. They served as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal life. June 1-7, Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that Camilla not suffer the punishment of Sodom and Gomorrah. Breath of God, breathe purity into Kamala. Amen. Damn Amen. it be the harlot. Damn it be the whore. Damned it be the deviant. For there is the harlot, the deviant, and the whore that corrupted the perfect child and all of God's kingdom. Heavenly Father, amen, amen, amen. Amen. And with that, I turn it over to Jack and Jacob. Jack, Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we, had, we would ask for just a little bit of quiet as we're putting uh, this young man this extraordinary young man has come forth to us. He has shown great courage throughout this process. As all of you know as journalists, this is not an easy thing to do. So we ask whether you agree, disagree, believe or disbelieve that you give him the respect he needs. Our witness today, as you see his statement before you on the table, Sean Newaldus. Sean, without further ado, Sean. My name is Sean Walters. I'm a company personal trainer. I'm at the year, I'm at, I am 26 years of age. I have served as a personal trainer to Senator Kamala Harris since she, became her, she began her work on Capitol Hill. For several years, our relationship remained purely professional and focused on keeping her in shape. Usually, our, workout, our workouts focused on interval cardio training as she prepared to run for president. The workouts became more intense. Our purely professional relationship eventually turned into more than that. On June 9th, 2019, I began an extensive sexual relationship with the United States Senator Kamala Harris at the Doubletree Hotel in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Since June 9th, I've had a total of 11 sexual encounters with the Senator, although in three such instances, she only performed oral sex on me, which is usually unusual for my clients. From the outset, it, it became clear to me that the senator's sexual needs what is this? and desires. Hang on, hang on. What, what is this? What's going on here? What's going on here? Can I tell him, please? What is this? Serve? Yes, I need to tell him, please. From the outset. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We've been served. From the outset. Hey, chat. Well, let me say loud and clear to Kamala and, and friends, to the Kamala Harris 2020 campaign, we will not be intimidated. This is a cease and desist, and she's asking us to cease and desist. Let me say loud and clear, we have no intention of ceasing and desisting. We will get the truth out, the truth will come out, and we have no plans to stop. What I say to the good senator today is we demand an answer to the charges le leveled today by Mr. Dualdis. Lewis. I'm gonna give you one chance to stop right there. You're gonna get sprayed by the hose. You decide. From the outset, it became clear to me that senators, the senator's sexual needs and desires were beyond exotic. I never forgot the grunting. The senator told me that she was frustrated with her husband and sexually due to his complete lack of size. It was so small I could hardly feel it, she said on several occasions. Our second encounter was in, D in the DC metro area, mid-July 2019. For this occasion, she had asked me to arrange a small orgy. I had been instructed to bring one black aged 18 to 22, and one white, aged 25 to 35. She also requested that the man be uncircumcised, saying that she didn't want it to remind her of her husband. I did as I was told, and I was paid 
Despite her being in her 50s, the senator was able to have sex for more than three hours straight. Eventually ended up covered head to toe in sweat. Our third encounter took place at the Willard Hotel in Washington, D.C. This time in early August 2019, the senator insisted I bring two black males. She specifically required that they be 18 or 19 years of age. Here, she enjoyed double penetration, or DP as she called it. She insisted on being called names during this session. I was not comfortable calling, her, calling the senator sexually charged explicitives, but she demanded it, so we obliged. As always, she complained constantly about how pathetic and small her husband was. She said that her husband makes a good living, but that his last wife left him because of total lack of intimacy in their marriage. On our fourth encounter, took pla it took place in New York City. For this, I received $7,500. This time, I was instructed to bring two white athletic males, aged 30 to 40. Again, she told me, to be, she told me that they should be uncut as to be reminded of her husband, not to be reminded of her husband. They performed simultaneous vaginal intercourse on a senator, which I refused to participate in. Both of these men later told me they were bisexual. I have not heard from the senator for almost a month, but I've, ret I've retained all text messages between her and I, which I'm happy to share with the American people. All right, now, now before we continue, we're going to uh, go ahead and have a question and answer session with the press here. Right there, right there in the button up. Yes, you. How's it going? Good, so good. I, I have a question. What's your Instagram? Hey, sir, we, we can't hear him speak, so please cut it out. Okay, okay, but I'm going to do it when you talk. <laughs> What's your Instagram name? Blissful Movements. Blissful, Blissful Movements. Next question. Young lady. What do you have on Andrew Yang? Got anything? Nothing, nothing. No, no, no. Andrew Yang has actually, in the last week, Andrew Yang has come here to 1599. And he is very close to receiving the Berkman Wall seal of approval. We'll see what happens. Right there, Mr. Zach. Berkman! Berkman! Yeah. Berkman! No, I haven't been paid. Berkman! No concerns about anything on this beautiful world. Right there, in the corn costume. Block me on Twitter, Jacob Wall. Why you block me on Twitter? Next question, right there in the jacket. Investigating the credible allegations that the Marine is Elizabeth Warren's brother. <laughs> Ma'am, sir, whatever you are, in between, I can't hear this man's question. Please stop, so I can hear his question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please repeat your question. Plans on investigating the credible allegations that the Marine is Elizabeth Warren's brother. Next question. Right there. Yes, we do. We're going to release them on Twitter very shortly. As a, with Kamala Harris as your client, why are you coming forward to sort of reveal this stuff? Wouldn't you keep it secret? No, no, no. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is not our client. Sorry, the client. And and listen, Ford, Ford, take a break. I should point out, and this may be hard to believe, that this is an apolitical operation. We are not concerned with politics. We disagree with the politics of every Democrat presidential candidate. And yet we come forward with truth and absolute truth. I want to. I want to echo. Right there, Zach. Yeah. I can't hear you. You got to tell this guy to stop, or I'm going to spray him. Hey. Zach, yes. What's your question? Okay. Senator Harris has sent us. Where's the order? Mrs. Harris, Senator Harris, has sent us a cease and desist order. I, would you like me to read the cease and desist order? All right, I'm going to read the cease and desist order. 
It says, notice to cease and desist from 1776 K Street. It says, you are hereby ordered to cease and desist from any further claims about Senator Harris and associated parties. We do not plan to cease and desist. We will continue. And if she would like the truth to come out, she can come here to 1599. I, I want to say, say just a couple words before Sean continues. This is a nonpartisan. The only guiding light we have is following the truth. We would follow the facts wherever they lead. There, there is not a stitch of politics in this. Sean. Excuse me! Didn't you get shot in the ass by Kevin Doherty two times? How did that feel? Any questions? Any? We're going to take three more questions. Three more questions. Banjo, banjo. I think my melody going, dipshit! Next question, right there in the blue, dark blue. I can't, listen guys, I, I need to hear his question, I can't hear him. What is, Let him speak. What is your uh, apolitical stance on the people of the Sugandese region, the uh, Ligma territory? What would you say about that? I have no idea. Next question. <laughs> Young lady. What do you have on Bernie? We have nothing on Bernie. Here's the thing. Listen, Bernie Sanders has come here for vetting and he has received the Berkman Wool seal of approval. I, I one wanna... final question, one final question. We're going to take one final question. Let's go to the young man here. Can we speak with the Would you like a one on one? Yeah, can, can we have a conversation? Would with you like a one on one with Kamala Harris's former personal trainer? Yeah. Zach gets a one on one. But, but Zach, I got to urge you. You should get a guest column in the Daily Beast. The school newspaper at George Mason is just not going to do it, it's too small. All right, guys. I want to say. Right. I, I want to say one thing to all of the candidates in both parties, in all parties. You cannot run successfully unless you come here. Now, I have a special message for Kamala Harris. She needs to come here, answer these allegations, and bring her own polygrapher. We, the polygraph. She can pick her own guy to do the polygraph. We want him and her here. We demand the polygraph. And she can pick her own polygrapher. Pick her. No, don't do that. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.